Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven-figure revenue mark? Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. Hope you're having a wonderful day. You're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Tersh Blissett, and my co-host sitting virtually next to me is Joshua Crouch. Uh, many of you know, and uh, if you haven't been on the show or you missed a you know, the last, I don't know, 30 episodes, uh, you may not know Josh, but uh, Josh's uh, new addition helped me out tremendously. He's a man, he's a lifesaver. Uh, come on the show and, and really help us out. But uh, super thankful for Josh to be on the show. I don't tell Josh that enough. Um, but <laughs> that being said, <laughs> I, uh, I'm i super excited about today's show. Uh, Stephen Christopher, for those who have have listen to the show or watch the show for a while know that steven uh he, he's a great friend of mine he's just a great dude in general uh and he introduced uh dan and i and uh so i'm super excited to talk to dan today uh about we're going to talk about uh executive leadership that's what well that's what dan is an executive leadership coach um, but we're going to talk a little bit about uh leadership versus management so are you a manager or a leader uh and uh we're going to dive a little bit into uh a system he has created um that kind of um teaches you or shows you how to do uh become a great leader uh with the four steps um the fourth step process uh so with that being said i'm super excited to have you on the show and welcome to the show dan thank you terse thank you josh i really appreciate that yeah so People are probably wondering what's an executive leadership coach, and uh, I always joke around because I'm an executive leadership coach only because I've spent the last 20 plus years in the trades and made most of the mistakes that I coach on nowadays. So it's uh, I stand up here pretty humble, and I appreciate y'all being on the show or y'all inviting me to the show. And uh, yeah, so what I coach on is called the four stages of leadership, and it's a leadership development uh, system that people can take from today's show and start to apply it to their business moving forward. To, uh, to help develop the leaders around them. And really, you know, nowadays you hear a lot about, you know, leader, leaders and followers, but you also hear this, this buzzword like leading leaders and what does that look like? And today you're going to learn about what that looks like because, man, when you start leading leaders in your business, you really uh, find yourself wondering, you know, trying to find something to do because they have, you know, they have it all going on. They're running your business and it's very successful. So, I'm sure that I'm sure that may have a few people wanting to hear this podcast. Today. Yeah, well, that's our goal, anyways. Yeah, definitely uh, to have it so that we can step away and take the vacation that we've. You know, we all started our business to uh, get rich sitting on a big a beach somewhere. So uh, <laughs> it would be nice to have that that person uh, being able to run that run the show uh, while we're uh, while we're away. So um, yeah, I'm super excited to to, to talk about that, Josh. What you, what do you think? I love this topic. Uh, as most of you guys know, I am at least the ones that have listened recently. I am I'm not a handy guy. I was more in the operations side of things. So, um, helping develop a team and develop the next generation of leaders is something that is is always an ongoing uh, challenge. Well, we're not going to call it a struggle. We'll call it a challenge. Um, but I think uh, just talking to Dan pre-show, I think you guys are going to get some some serious golden nuggets from some of the stuff that he goes through in his coaching program and some of the things that he looks for to help you develop the next set of leaders, because we all know the challenges here of not having enough people and not having enough qualified help. So you have to have some sort of system in place. And Dan is hopefully going to uh, drop some gold on you guys today. So that way uh, you can start getting to that pro start getting to that next step. Yeah. So Dan, will you start us off with uh, what is built for the trades? And it, like ha if somebody wants to learn something uh, about built for the trades and they have to jump off the show early, I, I want to make sure that they get the information, where to go and all that stuff from you first. Sure. Yeah. So built for the trades was built uh, around really providing customized business growth and leadership uh, development programs for 
for trades businesses. So what I say is I always begin with the end in mind and I really do. So when I start, you know, whenever, whenever we start working with a client, the first thing we do is get their vision for the next three years. And then we start to work our way backwards through systems that help them to grow businesses that can run, that, that can operate without them being in the day to days. And uh, the other thing we do is we have a mastermind community that's really built around experience. So it's built around doing business together. It's, it's all home service business owners coming together, uh, talking weekly, sharing secrets of, and, and sharing wins and losses in their business because we all know that we have both. And uh, when I say built around experiences, what makes Built for the Trades really different in the mastermind community is that we take our live events and we actually build them around going out and having an experience. Like uh, for instance, our last one was in Utah. We had a, a, a big, nice house, a private chef for a few days, and we, and we went out and rode side by sides and just built relationships and had a good time up, up in the mountains of Utah. So I'm sure that's uh, got a few people interested in, in, in having some fun like that. Yeah, that, that's one of the things that we were talking about before the show, too, is um, a lot. we go to these events and we're part of, you know, peer to peer groups and, and coaching organizations and, and <laughs> guidance organizations, implementation programs and we go to the event and some of the greatest conversations that you have not take anything away from the the events at all because they're mm -hmm. great co coaches they have tons of experience and and have a tons of knowledge uh sometimes we we fiend for that interaction with the other business owners like man because because you don't you don't really have that uh relationship with other people because it, it, it back home unless it's a, a someone who's a non-competing trade uh you can have that relationship but a lot of times the people who are experiencing the same things that you're experiencing are your competitors and so it's like oh you have that conversation with them uh but then like you, you go to a family reunion and uh, like Mike A talks about this and, and has mentioned this before. And I, I love this analogy is you go to a family reunion and people will ask you like have conversation. You can't really just divulge what you're going through in life as a business owner or a manager um, because they don't really ex understand it until they've experienced something similar to that. Uh, so it's awesome to have the mastermind group where you just go and spend time, like just hanging out and networking and talking to each other. And like, man, can you believe this happened to me? Like, and then someone else is like, Oh yeah, that happened to me two years ago. This is what I did, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I never would have thought of that. And, okay. and, and it's crazy how much those collab se sessions happen. Like, um, uh, there was a group of like 10 or 12 of us that all met up across the country at one of our friends, uh, um, uh, plumbing and HVAC company mm -hmm. in St. Louis. And we got to the hotel. We all flew in. We got to the hotel, um, like at, I don't know, five or six o'clock in the afternoon. We were all going to meet up at, uh, Todd's location the next morning, uh, and hang out there for the better part of the day and then go eat that night. Well, three o'clock in the morning, we're still sitting in the hotel lobby. All like all of us are just hanging out and just chatting. And like, even though we meet every Friday, like virtually just being there in person together was like, Oh, it was a game changer. Uh, that week we, we learned, I know personally, I learned so much information, um, just based off these other companies that have experienced stuff like that. And it was, nothing was, super i mean nothing was scripted at all it was literally oh yeah well what about this situation so i mean i love yeah. that you're taking taking the ball and running with that because that's something that our industry needs uh, dearly yeah it's, it, it's it's called a unplugged retreat and it's really the vision is that we all come together and then we leave our phones turned off so oh, imagine yeah. that bringing together business owners and then uh, telling them to turn their phones off it, it, it <laughs> takes a day or so sometimes they're they're tweaking a little bit trying to <laughs> wondering where the phones are at but uh it, it's amazing because you, you come back from from an event like that and you just feel refreshed and you feel energized ready to take on your business again so it's a lot of fun and uh, I, I think life is life is all all about having experience anyways right so absolutely absolutely do you ever have a, a, a owner come back from that retreat and be like man i turned my phone off for four days and then i turned it back on and 
oh, like now <laughs> six weeks to catch back up with all the yeah, emails. Tr <laughs> Truthfully, I uh, the only the only rule is no phones in the common area. So I think they oh, sneak yeah. back to their rooms sometimes and and turn yeah. them on. You, you know how it is. It's oh, it's, yeah. it's it's hard to to keep them away completely. But yeah, our next retreat's coming up in January. We're going to be in. Uh, Winter Park, Colorado, doing some, some snowmobiling, having a good time. So if anybody wants to check that out and learn more about it, just reach out to me and I'll share. Oh, that'd be awesome. Steven, if you're if you're listening to this still, we're going to have to meet up there and hang out. <laughs> that's right in his yeah, backyard. That's right. yeah. yeah, that's right in his backyard. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Cool, man. Well, um, will you kind of go into a little detail? Like, let's just jump right in, you know, feet first. And like, what's the difference between leadership and management? Because I know we're going to talk about so often, uh, Josh can share a little bit. I, I can share from personal experience, you know, having that lead service technician, uh, like you need a service manager. And mm -hmm. like, we all... Like we see it constantly. And as a service technician, it's almost like that's our holy grail when we get hired. Like, what's your end goal? Oh, I want to be a service manager. I want to be, a, you know, an install manager. Um, but in my opinion, they take two different paths. Like, obviously, you need somebody who has skilled trade knowledge. But to have someone who has that knowledge and a business background, a leadership background is going to be far more valuable than someone who is generating me a ton of money then I'm not going to lose the revenue coming out of the field. So kind of walk us through that, that thought process that you have with that. Yeah. And, and one thing I heard you say, Terrence was that they need um, knowledge in the trades or in that skill set. And I really want to debunk that because yeah. I personally have had experience, you know, with, with a success and bringing somebody up with operational experience, not necessarily trades experience and being successful in a service manager role, it just takes a little more time. And in, in that case, you do have to have a lead technician who can help answer a lot of the questions that come in. But the difference between leadership and management, is, it's, it's very simple. Leadership is influence. And uh, John Maxwell is one, you know, one of my mentors. I'm actually a, a John Maxwell certified coach. And he's in one of his quotes is leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And it's so true because the difference between leadership and management is management is accountability. And a lot of times when, when when people are moved into, let's just call it leadership roles, because that's the buzzword nowadays, 10 or 15 years ago, it was everybody was using management. Now everybody's using the word leadership. Um, when people are moved into that role, they're they're either on one end of the spectrum or the other. And one end is they're naturally great leaders because they're people pleasers by nature. They want to get along with people, build relationships, but those people have a hard time holding people accountable. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have people who we would call what hard asses or whatever. They, they hold people accountable. They say what they want to say. They just, uh, they're very blunt. And those people have a hard time uh, building relationships because that's a slow process. And they're on the right now train. And so it's interesting when you think about those two different personalities, the people who are usually on the right now train have that sense of urgency. They're ready to go, but they find themselves with a lot of uh, just followers, people who are asking them a thousand questions. What, what do I do next? You know, and it's really annoying because you're like, why does my phone ring a hundred times a day? Why do I have to keep <laughs> answering all these silly questions? And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have people who, are pretty easy going and sometimes lack of sense of urgency. And you're wondering as the visionary in the company, like why is that person not just going along a little quicker? Well, you've picked that personality and, and really once you know, who, you know, who's leading your company or, or who is that next leader in line and you know, their personalities, you can start to coach them uh, towards adjusting that a little bit. And what I say, it's like, if you're thinking about the uh, a disc personality assessment, it's either that high D or that low D and the high D is the ones that are very urgent in your face. The low D are the ones that are very easygoing, uh, people pleasing type personalities. I always say they need to both either need to adjust up towards the middle or down towards the middle to be a great leader because you have to be able to know when you're wearing your, your relationship building hat and know when you're wearing your, your management hat, which is that accountability that you need.
Yeah, I love that. And and you, <laughs> we did not talk about this beforehand. Uh, <laughs> and you hit the nail on the head because uh, about well, two thousand and fourteen, fifteen ish. Whenever I, I started um, my other HVAC company, um, I was getting like a hundred to one hundred and thirty phone calls a day. And oh, wow. it was like, you hit the nail on the head. Like I'm getting tons of phone calls. I have people that are just calling me for help. And I heard somebody, I want to say it was um, Dave Ramsey or either uh, Donald Miller's podcast. And mm -hmm. they, they talked about um, uh, limiting the expectations of people and making them uh, think before calling you. And so then I kind of put my twist on it and, from that day forward, every time they called me, they had to call me with three solutions with every problem that they had. And so uh, they'd call me and they, I'd say, okay, well, what's your three solutions on the problem or the issue that you have? And they were like, oh, well, I don't know. I haven't even, you know, like, I haven't even got on the roof yet. I'm like, click, mm. hang up. And uh, <laughs> like, not even say a word, just click, hang up. And then they call me back. I think we got disconnected. Yeah, we did. Um, call me back with your three solutions. Click. And then after like literally it was like a faucet. Two days later, I went down to like four calls a day. And I'm like, wow. Yes. I was like, uh, what do I do with my life now? Do Man, I still have my like, employees? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do they still work for me? On my desktop phone. I'm like, <laughs> my phone break. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was totally exactly like you say there. Like it. And uh, that was, a huge aha moment for me that I really had to, to, to work away from being that type of person. Yeah, that's really cool. Tersh. I mean, I, 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 a term I use a lot in my coaching is like, are you playing offense? Or are you playing defense? And I think, you know, when you're facing a problem coming with solutions and a positive mindset is playing offense coming with the problems and I'm the victim, you're playing defense. And, a lot of times that's naturally as humans, just look at the world we're living in today. Everybody's a victim, but as to be a great leader and to be thinking, you, you have to turn that mindset and keep that positive mindset, but be playing offense every day because things yeah. are going to be thrown at you. You're going to have difficulties that you run across, but it's how you approach it with, with, with that mindset. That's really going to make a difference Yeah, in how you lead. Huge, huge. Um, okay. So, the we kind of go into a little bit of detail about it, but we'll 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 pin that for just a second. Okay. Can you tell us the four stages of leadership? Um, like what what made you come up with this process and the system in general? And then kind of can you tell us what, what it is and stuff? You know, as far as what can, what made me come up with this process, um, it's a lot of reading leadership books and a lot of trial and error in my own home service business. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it started off probably as more than four stages, but I'm a guy who likes simple things. Um, so I try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, okay. And, uh, you know, and so the four stages are this, it's position is stage one, stage two is relationship. Stage three is production and stage four is reproduction. And the way, the way I, I teach it, it's just a cycle that keeps going round and round. So for instance, for people out there listening, it's like if I meet somebody for the first time, they know me as Dan, the executive leadership coach, and it's very positional. They don't know anything about my history. There's no credibility built. I haven't shown them my, my, um, that I'm a producer and what I do as a leadership coach. Uh, none of that has taken place. And so if I just go straight from the introduction to trying to teach somebody or train somebody or coach somebody on something, it's not going to be as effective because I've, I've, I've lacked building that relationship with that person. And, um, and so I, I coach through that. And what I tell my, my, my clients is the four stages can be done in one conversation or it can be done and it's really done in one conversation a lot of times, but it's also done in a lifetime relationship with people. Because if I meet somebody for the first time and, and I go to onboarding that person. And so I go from stage one introduction all the way to stage four. And I start training that person in a new position. I can never leave stage two behind at some point in the next few days. I need to make sure that I build relationship with that person. Cause if I just take that person and put them out in the field or put them in the office and I've lacked building any relationship with them, they're going to see me as a very positional business owner or a very positional manager. 
and they're going to be doing things just because I tell them to do things. And so, so you, how would you do uh, once you have, I don't know, like a hundred employees and like there's people walking around that you're like, I've never seen that guy before. Like <laughs> he's got my uniform on. Is he supposed to be here? <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. So when you have 100 employees, you really have to reproduce this knowledge in every one of your managers or leaders in your business. And as the as the owner visionary of your company, you have to be intentional about walking around and, and just you're probably not going to be able to build deeper relationships, but you can build casual relationships, just being present with people. Uh, the, the, but the answer to your question is, is that is that their direct managers need to be in charge of running the four stages of the leadership because that's the person that's going to be leading them through their journey in your business. Gotcha. So, so with, it's, it's a scale so model. Because most, most businesses don't have <clears> a <throat> hundred people yet. And if they are, <clears throat> they should probably be teaching us something. <laughs> um, <laughs> so with your business, let's say they have anywhere from one to 10 field employees, because okay. that's probably where most, I'm assuming most home service businesses are. What types of things should they be looking for in their current field employees or current employees in general, even in the office? And also, what should they be looking for in future interviews that they're having for people that could fill these roles at some point? Yeah. So once again, I keep it very foundational and very basic. So positive mindset's huge. If you have somebody who's consistently the negative, I call it like, like the negative Nancy in the group, always bringing people down. That's not going to be the person you want to put in a leadership role because because, you know, the way the way you got to picture it is a person leading that department or the person leading your company. Every level below that is just a trickle down of that person. And so I'm looking for people who are naturally taking initiative. I'm looking for people who are promoting teamwork. I'm looking for people who are organized, on time, prepared. Um, I'm looking for somebody who is taking ownership of their outcomes, just like Tersh said earlier, somebody who is actually bringing solutions to the table, like, wow, like that would blow you away if you had that person working for you. So it's not, you know, it, you're not looking for the top salesperson all the time, though you want to find somebody who is a producer, that doesn't mean they have to be your top salesperson. Producing is not just about sales, so that, that is a piece of it. Producing is about who you are as a person. And if you find somebody who's growing, outside of, of what they do day to day. Like you hop in a truck, one of your technicians and he's listening to a leadership podcast. Okay. This guy, I'd be kind of like, yeah, this guy's got something going on because he's wanting, he's wanting more. So yeah. I you know how many people are going to, they're going to realize now they're going to have a leadership podcast. As soon as their manager jumps in the truck with them, it's like, <laughs> they're going to have him queued up. Do it. Like, oh yeah. He's coming. Here he comes. Here he comes quick. <laughs> no, it's how do you avoid the, um, obviously the negative Nancy's we don't, we want to yeah. avoid that. Um, but the opposite side of the spectrum, the person who's overly optimistic about everything, you're like, all right, reality check here. Like we're not going to do 10 million the first year. Um, you, you just started this position. You know what I mean? So um, is there, is there a point to where you see that uh, that's, that is bad as well? Or can like uh, we have, we have several people that Josh and I know together and they, one of the, the go-to things is they'd rather um, they'd rather reel in a stallion than, than kick a mule. And uh, it, maybe that's the mindset that you, you approach with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so are you talking about with, with uh, just whenever you're picking out that person that, cause I, I heard you say that, you know um, the, you're trying to avoid the people who are going to be negative or they're going to suck the air out of the room. And mm -hmm. some people might call themselves a realist if they act that way. Like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm not being negative. I'm just being real. And so like, but at the same time, if you constantly are feeling that every time you have a conversation, then it's like, Oh man, I just do not want to be around this person anymore. Yeah. I mean, remember leadership is influence. And so if, if you decide to put that person in a leadership role, they're going to influence everybody else in that direction. And so the answer is, is, is just sitting down one, one with that person and, and educating them on, on that influential factor and seeing if they even care about that. Cause some people just don't care. And they'll be like, you know what, that's just me. I don't care what you think. 
then that's not going to be the next leader in line for your business unless you want to have that negativity floating through your culture. And, and that's why I always say, like, even when you're thinking about your culture and what that looks like, it's good to have a good set of core values established for your business. And you hold people accountable to it because ultimately those core values as you, the business owner, plus accountability is going to equal your culture. And a lot of times, you know, they may or may not have core values on their wall for their business, but the accountability piece lacks. And I guarantee you nobody's core value is negativity. So uh, which I would hope not. But uh, <laughs> Right. Hopefully that answers. And and going back to that that analogy of like the racehorse and the plow horse, you know, the racehorses are typically your top selling people. Uh, they like the autonomy of and the freedom of of doing their own thing. They like to kind of make their own schedule. They like to only worry about themselves and the customer they're standing in front of. That person right there, you'd have to really educate on that. Um, you know, being a leader is not a glamorous thing. Yes, you might have a title of service manager. But the reality is, is now you're dealing with all the technicians plus the apprentices coming up. You're dealing with all the angry customers. You're getting less pay more than likely. You're working long hours. You know, you're doing all these things that that person, after they get educated towards what that looks like, maybe like, I don't want any of that. And so it's good as a business owner. I don't think anyone wants to be a service manager anymore. (laughs) (laughs) So the, uh, but the other, uh, the other end of the spectrum is, you know, the, they may be a person whose body's given out on them, right? In the trades, that's pretty common. Or yeah, they may see true. that, hey, one day they want to own their own business or one day they want to be the general manager. Uh, they want to work in the office more than they work in the field. There's a lot of, I mean, there's, there's pros and cons both, both ways you look at it. But uh, going into it with the right expectations is important because it's not about you. It's about it's about everybody else around you once you start leading other people. That's a great point. Now, with I I know we we talked about this um, Mm pre-show, you have like 10 questions that you go through when it comes to uh, make sure I understand this right. 10 questions that you as far as developing that next leader, is that? Is that what I understood? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. So do you want to, do you want to go into that like a real, like a short dive and then people can reach out to you a little more in detail if they want to go in deeper with this? Yeah, I definitely can. So, you know, whenever you're sitting around looking at all the team members you have in your business and you're wondering, do I have a service manager or do I have an office manager, somebody who's showing potential to be the next leader in line? A couple questions I ask myself is, is do I have anybody in my business who's influencing my culture in a positive light? Like people like you don't want that person who's just always optimistic no matter what. And they never are faced by it. But you do want somebody who's showing up and and being optimistic more times than they're not. And and the other part is, like I said earlier, is like, is there anybody in the business who's who's growing themselves outside of just coming in? the day-to-day operations and what they're currently doing. So those are a couple of things I look for. So um, somebody that doesn't punch in and punch out and then they don't care about the rest of the business. Yeah, exactly. And if you have people punching in and punching out, it, it's it's definitely something to do with your culture and the leadership in your culture. Um, I call those just enough employees. And we see that a lot in the government where people are just there, they're grumpy, <laughs> they're punching in, they're punching out. <laughs> And, and nobody wants to have that in their business. And we want people who are engaged, who know where the company is going, what does a vision look like and how do they play a role in that vision? And that's really what I help companies um, establish. And so it's it's just little things, you know, see, seeing people who are taking initiative, seeing people who are organized naturally. I'm not going to want anybody who's like super egotistical, but having a little ego is good. We want somebody who's confident, right? Um, confident and humble at the same time. Um, you know, and then if you have somebody who says, Hey, look, I take complete ownership of this mistake. I'm going to make it right. Like mind blown. Right. Like who does that? Everybody's typically like, a the emoji? The customer, yeah, the customer did this. My helper left the tool on the job, you know, all these different excuses that we hear from followers out there. And, and I'm not picking on anybody because that was me at one point. I grew up as a service technician and into running my own and then and then follow that up into running my own business. But so I've done I, I've been in all the different roles and I understand the growth that it takes to get to 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 where you want to go in that leadership role. And going back to like the fourth stage of the leadership, that position, stage one, 
The one thing I'll, I'll say to all business owners and managers out there is you have to give clarity in writing of what's expected of that person that you're leading. You know, that's one of the biggest mistakes is we're so vague. And well, so, how, if, if, if you do in a brand new position, how do you know what you expect from someone? Uh, you write a position, uh, <laughs> you'll sit down <laughs> and write a position agreement. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Like, that's the thing that I feel like, uh, I mean, I experienced it myself and then I, I've, I've heard people ask this constantly and it's, you know, um, I don't have that job role built out. I do it personally or, you know, so-and-so does it and they're overloaded and they're dropping the ball and all this stuff. So I feel like I should hire for this position. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a call coordinator uh, where our install manager was doing it, but now they're overloaded. Uh, but I don't know how to tell this person what they're supposed to be doing because I don't really know. Like what, what, what advice would you give to somebody that, that asked that particular question? Well, I mean, a couple of things we could do here. So the first thing is they could log, you know, what they're doing while they're doing that task. We can get a better understanding what that looks like. Uh, the second thing is, is that never skip the position agreement. Uh, once again, right, we are creating lead leaders that lead leaders and you can't lead your own life if you don't know what's expected of you. So if you want to continuously lead followers, then go ahead and just ignore what I said and skip writing any kind of position agreement and just put them in that role and say, hey, go out and just be the best leader you can be. Go out and manage this team like a rock star. And then they go out there and next thing you know, they're talking to me a few months later and they're like, man, I don't know why that guy can't be a, a better service manager. I mean, I gave him a pay raise and I, I gave him his own pickup truck and told him to go out there and, <laughs> and help these technicians earn their KPIs. And, you know, but they never really, they never really set a good foundation and, and position agreements do that well. And, and what I always tell people is like, once you write it and you sit down with that person and you go through it, you're going to have to go through it a few more times, especially in the first 90 days. You really need to revisit that because it, when it comes to holding people accountable, the, the, the one thing I'll say is you got to take all the feelings out of holding people accountable. Like you know, leadership is influence, leadership is feelings, but management is accountability. And that's why we, that's why you have systems in your business, like position agreements, that's why you have systems in your business like core values, um, you know, because you want to you want to lean back on something besides my feelings. You want to say, hey, look, here's what you signed. Here's what you agreed upon when you came to work at this company. And here's what I'm going to hold you accountable to. Yeah. Now, you said that never skip the position agreement. Are, are, you, is, are you just saying for like, quote unquote, management positions or like every position in the business? Every position in the business. Okay. So you could, you, you, do you believe in the philosophy of leading from the bottom up also like a, like if someone like no matter where you are in the, in the company, you can be a leader. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Leadership is influence. So, um, you know, it, we, we all have it, right. We all have it. We all finish the training session with our technicians. And then the next thing you know, they're out by the truck smoking a cigarette and you got one ring leader who's influencing everybody saying, Oh, that was, that was BS. You know, you shouldn't listen to that. And oh yeah, you should be out there doing it like this. And so once again, that's why it's your core values plus accountability equals your culture. If you allow that to go on, um, you know, that person is undermining everything that you're trying to accomplish in your business. And so um, we're all, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, like I said, it, it's all about influence and it's all about who you have in that culture and what you're allowing. And so the answer, the long answer to that is yes. <laughs> uh, you can you can lead in any position because leadership is not a position title um, mm -hmm. at all. Cool, bud. If people want to get more information about you, uh, built for the trades, like any of that stuff, where where should they go? So definitely, you know, builtforthetrades.com is my website. Uh, they can follow me at Facebook at Built for the Trades or Instagram at Built for the Trades. Um, also find me on LinkedIn, Dan Dowdy there. And, uh, I, you know, I'd love to share more really, really, like I said, all this stuff comes from my past experiences and, uh, and, but I've also used it and continue to use it in the trades and it's, it, it makes a huge difference. Cool. And where do we sign up for this trip in January? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. It's all Paul's already said he's in. So, <laughs> He wants yeah. to see see tall Paul on some skis is what he said earlier. 
Uh, Paul, you have to pay for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just just hop on our hop on the Billfoot Trades website and check out our mastermind community. We do mastermind groups for for business owners and managers. And uh, you know, if you're interested in learning more, just reach out to me, uh, Dan at BuiltForTheTrades.com. And and you know, I I'll allow anybody to come on and check out the mastermind group one time, uh, no charge. Just kind of come on and see what it's all about. But you know, once again, it's like if if somebody who's never really been um, in a coaching space before, never really been in a mastermind group. I always recommend coming into the mastermind community first because you're going to find peers that you can really relate to because it's other other people just like you who own or manage home service businesses, and uh, it's a great place to be because it's a whole it's a whole mindset of like you're the sum of the five people you hang around. Very true. So who are you going to hang around? And so if you have ten or fifteen people in a group that you're hanging around every week, imagine what that looks like. Yeah, especially if like you have successful people or people who are motivated and and uh, because it is very true. You are the five people that you hang around. So if you're around Debbie Downers all the time, no matter how much of a pick me up person you are, you're going to become that person. And the the challenge that I have with this is that uh, I tend to surround myself with all these uber successful people. Yeah. And so then I'm like, oh, what do I have to offer for, you know, these groups? Because like I am way you're in the right group. Here. <laughs> They're way up here. And so, uh, yeah, I, I feel guilty from time to time for that, for sure. Yeah, I think that's normal. That's normal for, for everybody. But the, the reality is, is, is everybody has something to teach us. It's just a matter. Of, are we willing to listen? And then uh, as far as that, that point of view is you just got to be willing to share, because no matter where you're at in life, there's an experience that you've had that I guarantee that other person hasn't had True. or you have a different perspective based on your past experiences. And so it's always good. Don't don't shy away from checking it out just because of, of where you're at in your business oh, or, yeah. you know, where you're at in your career, because it's, it's it's really good to uh, to dive in and get out of your comfort zone for sure. A hundred percent. Dan, I appreciate it. I thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, Josh, do you have any closing remarks or questions before I wrap things up? Yeah. Yeah. I would, uh, I would highly encourage you guys that are, because we see it in the groups all the time, these other Facebook groups where people are trying to develop a leader or figure out who they should do this with, or maybe they should promote this person or what does this look like? It's you guys, you guys see these things on, and listen to these on podcasts, but take that first step, jump into uh, Dan's mastermind group and, and see what it's about. The first step is always, always the hardest. If you take that first step and you jump into that, you, you're going to be opened up to a, a, a whole new world of things that you didn't even realize was possible. And then you can start down the journey of really getting your business in line, growing your business and getting to the point where you're not the guy for everything or the gal for everything. So I highly encourage you to check out Dan's uh, mastermind group and uh, if you have someone that if you're trying to figure out who the next leader in your business is, reach out to them and see what uh, see what you can learn about those questions. So you can ask yourself those questions about the people in your business. It's good stuff. Yeah. Thank you all for having me on the podcast. And you'll and you'll see that this four stages of leadership as you dive more into it. It's a great sales system, too. Right. Because it's all about communication. It's all about leading. It's all about building those relationships, both with the team around you and your clients. So thank you all again for having me on the podcast. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thanks for thank coming you. on, Dan. Yeah. And thank you, uh, Stephen, too, for uh, making the introduction. Uh, we wouldn't have this conversation without without that fellow. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. We'll have um, all of our contact information in the show notes. And uh, with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful and safe week until we talk again next time on the Service Business Mastery Podcast. Uh, this is a podcast focused on service business owners, managers, and technicians who are considering becoming business owners as well. Uh, we hope and we our target is to help answer the unasked questions. Uh, and so I hope that we did that in today's show. Um, until we talk to you next time, see you later. See you. All right, thanks. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.